Welcome back. For most of us, the regularity of our heartbeat never crosses our minds. But every month, doctors say about 10,000 Americans with heart failure have a device implanted to continuously monitor their heart. Yeah, I spoke with, or actually you spoke yeah. with, I think it was Dr. Kevin Stein, who is the Chief Medical uh, Officer of Rhythm Management at Boston Scientific about the technology that is really Amazing. helping patients. Yeah, I also got a chance to speak with Emily Herman about her diagnosis. Take a look. Sure, so when I was in high school, I began to experience some dizziness and shortness of breath when I was exercising. I eventually went to a doctor and was diagnosed with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, which is a heart condition that puts me at high risk for sudden cardiac arrest. So shortly after that, I received my first ICD at age 19. All right, uh, and, and that, uh, you mentioned something there that Dr. Stein, I'm gonna need a little explanation here. How do ICDs work and how has the technology evolved to help people like Emily over the years? Sure, Curtis. Uh, at Boston Scientific, we developed the first ever ICD for commercial use. And that's why we're sponsoring this interview today. And what an ICD is, basically it's an electrical device, gets implanted under the skin in the chest of the patient, and then typically there's a wire that goes through blood vessel into the heart itself. And what it does is to monitor the heart's rhythm beat by beat. And if a patient has a cardiac arrest, it can give a shock, you know, just like the medical shows and TV, and bring a patient back to life. Wow, that's, that is, uh, that's amazing, the technology um, that we have right now. And Emily, I gotta ask you, as far as the device, the replacements, how, how many have you had and how has this impacted you and your family? Sure, yeah, I've had, four, I've had three devices in the past 14 years. My first two lasted between two and five years. And then my most recent one I've had for the last five years and it's expected to last another five, or sorry, last seven years, it's expected to last another five. So for us, um, besides just the emotional um, struggle of having to go through these surgeries repeatedly, it's been a huge financial hit for us being on a high, high deductible health plan um, because you're having to kind of account for that in your savings account and prepare for those inevitable upcoming surgeries. Yeah, that, uh, that, can, that can definitely be daunting. And, and it's, it's clear to see, Dr. Stein, why battery longevity is so important for doctors in, this, uh, in the healthcare systems with, with devices like this. But talk about that and what the advancements in battery longevity has meant for, for you and your field. Sure, Curtis. You know, the, the thing is that and a lot of people don't recognize this until they actually have to undergo these procedures. You know, it's not like a simple consumer electronics device where you just flip up a panel when the battery runs down and put in a new one. You know, th these are hermetically sealed. And so when the battery runs down, you need to have a surgical procedure, take out the entire unit, replace it with a new one. And, and for folks like Emily, right, there's risk involved whenever you have surgery, there's discomfort involved, and there's also just the cost of having these changed. We've now had nine different studies that show that our new battery technology, which is called EnduroLife, lasts up to twice as long as older devices or devices that are still on the market from our competitors. Uh, and, and in fact, in Britain, where they have nationalized health, uh, the National Health Service has an institute called NICE. Uh, it's the National Institute for Health and Care Effectiveness. And they looked at all this data and recently came out with a specific recommendation that doctors there should use devices with this technology. And they estimated that if they did that, it would save England six million pounds over five years. Uh, that, that's music to everyone's ears out there. Obviously, the cost of health care is on everyone's minds. And Appreciate uh, you guys being here. Emily, thanks for sharing your, your story. And let folks know where they can get all this stuff in one place, Doc. Sure. You know, for folks who want to learn more about it, see some of those studies that I talked about, there's a website called devicelongevity.com. And again, if folks have any specific questions about their own individual care, best thing to do is just reach out to your own doc. And we'd like to thank Boston Scientific for making that segment possible. 